what do you think about the movement of fast food and retail workers right now demanding higher wages? Are, are they being disciplined enough and putting it, enough it, pressure on Washington? Well, they don't have a union. I mean, uh, you know, uh, McDonald's, uh, Walmart, uh, all of these have resisted unionization. Uh, and without a union, it is very hard to have any strategy. It's very mm -hmm. hard. I mean, you can have wildcat strikes, uh, and they focus attention on the fact that most of these low-wage workers today are not teenagers, they're not uh, third breadwinners, they are actually adults bringing in on average almost half of family income, mm -hmm. but you, you, you can't actually move in any direction in terms of pressure on the companies or even pressure legislatively to raise the minimum wage uh, unless you have a uh, fundamental organization and that means in many cases a trade union. Part of the reason why it evolved apart from a trade union is that many of the unions in this country are so lethargic and disinterested in actually organizing that you can't get this kind of movement and, has, and recently haven't been that interested in sort of the precarious retail sector. So I agree, you need organization and it would be useful if they could turn this into some sort of structure. But I think that, that the, the movement being outside of the union has actually become really, uh, you know, given it a lot of life. Wherever the unions are strong, and the airlines, we've every single airline's got out of business. Every single one's filed bankruptcy. Wherever the unions are strong, like in the, in the cities, uh, you've got bankruptcies like Detroit. So wherever the unions are powerfully strong, you know, in Greece, for example, uh, you seem to, it's, it has led to financial disarray. But again, apples and oranges. Yeah. But it uh, shows also that, to, to some extent, the, the more that you push up wages in a sector, the less competitive it is economically, and it leads to these kinds of problems. This goes to show you that in a, in a capitalist economy, there's only so much you can actually improve, improve living standards before it starts to, to backfire and jobs go overseas, which is why you need something different. Well, this is, look, at uh, this is why uh, in the fast food sector, in the big box retailers like Walmart, uh, we do uh, need, those workers do need and could benefit tremendously by unionization because those workers don't have to compete uh, with workers directly abroad. Uh, they, they are in the personal service sector of the economy. Retail, restaurant, hotel, hospital, surface transportation, child care, elder care. This is where most of the new jobs are coming from. They are not affected by international competition. They are also not, for the most part, uh, affected by technological change because the uh, the service is personal uh, so that if you raise their wages you are not going to lead to a lot of unemployment you're not going to lead to a lot of increases in prices because these uh, companies are very competitive and have got to stay competitive they're very profitable they can afford to raise people's wages and the failure to raise the wages means that the rest of us are in effect subsidizing the Walmarts of the world who won't raise their wages of their, over the poor people. So we are subsidizing the food stamps uh, and all of the other things that uh, low income housing that these people need in order to leave, lead decent lives.